In this video, we'll be talking about stem cells. And this is kind of like an overview. And in subsequent videos, we are going to delve deep into aspects of the stem cells. So stem cells are cells that have the ability to develop into many different cell types. So one stem cell can either self renew and recreate itself, or it can generate progeny that is capable of producing a differentiated cell type. So these are two important uh, properties of a conventional stem cell. So stem cells are unspecialized. That means they have the possibility to become many things, but right now they are in a malleable state. Stem cells have the self renewal properties and stem cells can also differentiate into several lineages based on context. In this video, we would try to understand how these definitions always doesn't hold true in all these contexts. So stay tuned till the end. These are pretty much textbook oriented view about stem cells. Anyway, stem cell has the possibility to give rise to different cellular lineages that we can appreciate in this video. So question is, where we would see the stem cells in our body. How are they different from a normal cell type that is present in any organ? Let's say how they are different from neuron or hepatocytes. And the question is, what is the relevance of the stem cell in context of uh, medicine? So first, let's try to understand where we can find them in a body. They can be found in bone marrow because our blood is basically generated from the hematopoietic stem cells. Our intestine is regenerating all the time because they have stem cells in it. So the muscle injury can be healed many times because of these stem cells. And whenever you cut your skin with a knife or something, due to some adult stem cell present in that skin region, it can heal properly. And when our brain was developing in the mother's womb, we also had plenty of stem cells that produced the neurons that we are using today. Anyway, in our adult brain also, in the hippocampal region, which is the memory center, we have plenty of stem cells. So stem cells could be subcategorized based on some classical ideas. So some could be embryonic stem cells. We'll come to it. Some could be adult stem cells that are present in, let's say, skin or uh, let's say some part of the brain like hippocampus. There could be induced pluripotent stem cell. That means one cell can be forced to become a stem cell with a chemical formula. Okay, let's begin to understand um, how they are different from different cell types. So stem cells eventually get committed and form a differentiated cell type. So stem cell has two choice. So basically either to differentiate or to self renew. So people always wondered how that happened. People proposed population asymmetry model. That means in a pool of stem cell, there are some cells which are more uh, prone to give rise to committed cells, eventually differentiating into a lineage. And there are some cells which are more prone to self renew. This is how there are always a pool of self renewal pro cells and uh, cells that are tend to differentiate more. But there are also other models where, which suggest that, okay, stem cell decrease their potency in, sub, in, in subsequent fashion, like they become committed stem cells, they then becomes progenitor cells, and then eventually give rise to different cell, cellular lineages. This is another model or another way of thinking about it. So question is, how does stem cell decide like when to regenerate or recreate itself versus when to differentiate? It's a big challenge for the stem cell. So option one, they should self renew. Option two is they should commit and become a differentiated cell. So the drive that dictates these outcome could be intrinsic or could be extrinsic. That means coming from inside or coming from the external environment. So what could be these intrinsic and extrinsic cue? So let us try to understand. So there could be mechanical signal, which are extrinsic signal telling a stem cell to differentiate into lineages. So there could be cell matrix interaction, interaction between the integrins and the extracellular matrix. There could be cell cell interaction via several kind of signaling pathways. All these can possibly dictate the fate of the stem cell. And these are important in context of understanding stem cell behavior. Okay, just not only uh, these kind of like cell cell contact based signal, there could be also soluble signal coming from a distance. So that are dictating the fate of these stem cell. 
So how they interpret this signal actually drive the fit and also decide whether to regenerate or to differentiate. And the mode of signaling could be threefold. Either these cells are in near vicinity, so there could be paracrine mode, or these cells could be self-stimulating, so there could be autocrine mode, and rarely it could be endocrine where the cells are at far apart. But anyway, there could be intrinsic signals as well. Intrinsic signal tells a stem cell that basically what to become in life, like what, what would be its end fate. This is alternative hypothesis, as if the stem cell knows what it has to do in the life and it doesn't need any external guidance for its own fate. So obviously this stem cell knows it has to become this blue cell and not the epithelial cell. So there could be internal molecular program or internal clock which is monitoring these kind of effect. Now all these are hypotheses. In subsequent videos we would try to understand what are the exact mechanism. The question is what are these intrinsic signals? What are the molecular nature of these intrinsic signals and how these messages are actually reliably interpreted by these stem cells? So one of the hypotheses that people come out in this developmental biology field is like when the egg is fertilized uh, by the sperm, it creates the zygote. Now imagine in a zygote, you have differential organization of uh, competence factors and they are like distributed all over the place in a specific polarized fashion. That means when the cells eventually divide, each cell gets different determinants and based on what determinant it got, it would go to a different cellular fate. So obviously, the fate that it would choose is kind of pre-programmed. And these determinants could be actually transcription factor, sometimes microRNAs, mRNAs, long non-coding RNAs and many more. So the in terms of defining cells fate or stem cell fate, morphogen gradient is really important. That's how stem cell fate is determined during development. So morphogen are diffusible molecules that are secreted by a source cell and cells which are in near vicinity, which could be stem cells, they could respond to it. Eventually, based on the gra gradient and the meaning inside the morphogen gradient, cell choose to commit to different fate. So interpretation of the morphogen gradient is really important for different fate commitment. Now, how that could be basically interpreted by stem cells that what to become and how that differential interpretation lead to difference fate is an interesting and challenging problem. One can imagine that there is tissue specific competence factor. That means there are certain interactors present in one cell type or tissue type versus the another. There could be temporal uh, dynamics of the signaling gradient. That means different cell experience the morphogen for different time. There could be signaling dynamics, like even if they experience the morphogen from same time, the type of response that the cell show might be different. Or there could be also transcription modules which act differently based on the morphogen concentration. All these potential factors can lead to tissue patterning or fate specification of the stem cells. And it's a big deal and a complicated process happening in our body very reliably. Okay, let's talk about the potency of the stem cells. Okay, the stem cells has highest potency at the zygote stage. And at this point, it is known as pluripotent, uh, uh, totipotent stem cell. It divides eventually to two cell stage, four cell stage, and eventually forms the morula and the blastula. So the blastocyst has pluripotent stem cells. Blastocyst has the inner cell mass, which has the capability to give rise to the pluripotent stem cells. Now question is what is totipotent stem cell or pluripotent stem cell? So totipotent stem cells are those cells that can give rise to embryonic tissue as well as extra embryonic tissue like placenta. Zygote is the only totipotent stem, stem cell known in the human field. Now here is an important problem. So people think that stem cell has that capability to become, uh, to, to regenerate itself or differentiate into lineage. Think about this particular zygote. It divides but it does not form another zygote, right? So the classical formula doesn't always hold true and the definitions are the definitions of stem cell has to be fine-tuned. Anyway, pluripotent stem cells are classically defined as stem cells which can give rise to all embryonic tissue but not the extra embryonic tissue, that means the placenta. So the cells of inner cell mass are actually pluripotent stem cell. So it's also important that how the stem cell uh, 
change its fate commitment because when a blastocysts get implanted into the mother's uh, endometrium things have changed so here the blastocyst has not implanted into the uterine wall eventually it would get implanted so in these two different contexts there are two different thing that could possibly happen anyway here is the trophoblast and here is the inner uh, cell mass which is the potential pluripotent stem cells now when the blastocyst did not implant into the uterine uh, uterine lining at this point the cells inside is known as having known to have a naive pluripotent state whereas the transient state that it has after implantation is known as primed pluripotency the molecular pathways the cellular underpinnings all are different between these two steps all that has changed in these two steps is the environment so environment has a huge role in stem cell fet commitment now this can also be understood from a different experiment like not only the environment but also the division plane so it has been seen that uh from morula to blastocyst transition they, these are the cells of the trophoectoderm and one can see if the division happens in a plane parallel to the epicobasal plane then these cells would eventually give rise to trophoectoderm cells and trophoectoderm expands if the division plane is different that, that means it is perpendicular to the epicobasal plane then it gives rise to the inner cell mass cells so obviously the plane of division give rise to different kind of fate and this is super important in context of a uh, in context of stem cell fate commitment so next question is what is the relevance of these stem cells so stem cell is such a huge field it's very difficult to condense everything in one particular video but basically let's say you have a third degree burn in your hand so you need a graft and sometime what happens is graft gets often rejected but let's say some cells from your skin is taken it is converted using the ipsc technology to uh using the ipsc technology to the induced pluripotent stem cell and the skin cells are grown from that and that is grafted in your skin then it there is no chance of immune rejection because the cells that are used for grafting is your cells so these kind of clinical potential is there for stem cell now you must be wondering these kind of thing happened ever in the history so let us end this video with a little bit of history and few open questions so if we look at the timeline 1998 was the first time when human embryonic stem cells were isolated by james thompson few years later there was a ground breaking discovery in the stem cell field work from shinya yamanaka and k takashi showed that using a proper molecular cocktail any cell can be converted into a stem cell that means they can be pushed to become a stem cell isn't that amazing and it has huge clinical potential down the line in 2010 first clinical tri trial using embryonic stem cell derived opc1 treatment was given to the spinal cord injury patients also in 2017 first time ipsc has been used to treat macular degeneration that means the discovery of the stem cell understanding how stem cell work has really changed the way we think about remedy to many problems and people think or the scientists thinks that in future stem cells would totally change the potential of the clinical research and especially it would bring stem cell replacement therapy for many disease so i hope this video was insightful interesting and if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe there would be more and more videos on stem cells so stay tuned for more see you in next video